Welcome to Data Structures. This course is created by the Stanford Crowd Course Initiative. Get excited because there are a lot of interesting bits of knowledge coming your way. In this video, we will cover the absolute essentials of trees. What is a tree? A tree basically has nodes, similar to a linked list, but structured in a different manner. For instance, each node may have 0, 1, 2, or as many children. Each node can only have one parent. Also, every node is reachable from the root. The root is a special node which has no parent node and is always at the top of the tree, as seen in the figure. More specific version of tree is a binary tree. In a binary tree, each node can have only up to two children. It can have a right child or a left child. Now we are going to go over some specific terminologies for a tree. Here A is the root of this tree because A can reach every other node in this tree and A has no parent. C, D and F are leaves of this tree because they do not have any children. E is a parent of F. D is a left child of B. E is a right child of B. B, D, E and F are left subtree of A. C constitutes the right subtree of A. And also node F is at depth 3. The definition of depth is the length of the path to reach that node from the root. Here, I have written a tree node class in Java. This tree node represents a node for a binary tree. Remember that in a binary tree, a node can have up to two pointers, one for the left subtree and another for the right subtree. In this example, we are going to represent the node that stores B. B represents data. Left points to the node storing D. Right points to the node storing E. There are two constructors to create this tree node object. One constructor initializes or sets the left and right pointers to null. And the second one sets its left and right pointers to the appropriate ones. The common operation for trees are insertion, deletion and search. These methods can be done recursively as it is easier to write. I will show you how to do so in the next few slides. Remember that when writing recursive methods, you need a base case. Most of the time, the base case will be for an empty tree or for a leaf. I have written code for searching for a target element in a binary tree. This code is done recursively. Look at how short and sweet the code is. In this case, the base case is when it is an empty tree or in other words, the node value is null. Now, let's look at some piece of code which helps us to find the height of a node in a binary tree. The height of a node is the length of the longest path from that node to a leaf. Again, this code is done recursively. In this method, we use the math.max method because the definition of height is the length of the longest path from the node to the leaf. Now, let's look at a binary search tree, which is a more specific version of a tree. It is also called commonly as a BST. In this type of tree, all the values to the left of a node are lesser than it, and all the values to the right of a node are greater than it. Also, the tree contains no duplicate values. Now, let's try to look at insertion in a binary search tree. In this tree, 
on the left, let's try to insert the value 17. First, we compare this value against 20, which is the root, and 17 is less than 20. So, we go and search towards the left subtree. Now, we compare 17 with 10. 17 is greater than 10. So, now we search the right subtree of 10. Now, we compare 17 against 15. 17 is greater than 15. Hence, we search right. Now, this element is null. Hence, we can add 17 as the right child of 15. Hence, we have successfully in finished inserting 17. Now, let's look at deletion in a binary search tree. Delete has three different cases. Let's look at each one of them with an example each. In the first scenario, the node to be removed or deleted has no children. This case is quite simple. The algorithm simply sets the link of the parent to null and disposes the node. In our example, we are trying to remove the node 4. So, the algorithm simply removes the element and sets the parent's link to null. Let's take the second example where the node to be removed has one child. In this case, the node is cut from the tree and the algorithm links a singly linked list, a single child, directly to the parent of the removed node. In this example, node 21 is directly attached to the parent file. Now let's come to the most complex case for deletion where each the node to be deleted has two children. To remove a node which has two children, the first step we need to do is to find the minimum value in the right subtree. Next, we replace the value of the node to be removed with the found minimum. Now, the right subtree contains a duplicate. Now, we apply remove to the right subtree to remove the duplicate. Notice that the node with the minimum value has no left child, hence, its removal may result in case 1 or case 2. In the example here, we want to delete 12. So, we find the minimum element which is 19 and replace it with 12. After replacing 12 with 19, notice that we only replaced the values and not the nodes. Now, we have two nodes with the same value. Now, we remove 19 from the left subtree and hence the deletion is complete. This is a recursive method for searching for a specific element for a binary search tree. The important difference between this method and the method for searching in a regular binary tree is the compare method. Depending on the target data is greater or less than the current node you are looking at, you will either search left or the right you will never need to search both left or right. Because of this, searching is not order n, instead it's order log n. This reduction in time complexity is the reason why binary search trees are efficient data structures compared to lists. On average, the method will take order log n. However, if the tree is unbalanced, meaning that all the nodes are heavier on one side than the other, all these operations will take order n. If it's super unbalanced, the tree is essentially a linked list. Thank you. Now we complete the basics of introduction to trees.